Alrighty, so now we're going to be getting into some more complex marking technique and, and topics and mainly just going over the different terminology because um, obviously I can only do so much as far as showing you guys. Be sure to let me know at practice if you guys have any questions, you know, let your captains know, any bets, whatever. So the first thing we're going to start with is strike. So what does it mean when someone says strike? So we all know from Santa Cruz that the strike cut looks like so, where you are cutting up the line. Um, also, that's another name for it, upline cut, strike cut. Um, and receiving the impetus from the handler um, pretty much right in front of them. And this is normally a cut performed by the dump uh, to get to gain yards as well as resetting the stock count. And normally the mark is trailing them on defense if they get open, and uh, the handler throws a little pass forward for a nice gain. Um, and so basically, you know, how do we defend this as a mark, right? So... Um, that defender, that red X on the left side of your screen, um, it's kind of their job to communicate to the mark. So if they're getting beat in a strike cut, then they need to say strike, 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 and let the mark know. And the mark can then adjust and help them out by jumping in front of that lane that they want to throw to, to try and prevent that look. But you only want to do that, you only want to jump for maybe one second, because that look is really only there for maybe one stall count. And the second that that stall count and that throw is cut off, then you jump right back and put on your normal force, force away, because what can happen is that person from the front of the stack who should be filling into that dump space, you don't want that pass to be super easy either. So that's kind of the what it means when someone says strike, strike, strike. You're just jumping in front, flashing for one second, and then hopping back and make sure you're maintaining your force. Um, and cutting off all the options. So you should really only try to call strike when you're getting beat on that strike cut. So the next thing we're gonna go over when someone says no big. And when that basically means is no big, you don't want the deep throw. So this can be said to somebody, um, you know, that person in the back of the stack, if we think that person's gonna go deep, it also is an indication for the mark to jump in front and prevent that big loopy pass from happening. Um, it's much harder to throw a huck when the force is straight up or flat, uh, which we're going to go over next. Um, but it's much harder to throw that huck throw when somebody's right in your face rather than um, it being completely open if you're just maintaining the force. So when no big is called, it's the same exact movement as strike, you're just cutting off a different throw. Um, so the two could be interchangeable, but um, you know, you want to be able to make sure that you're using strike for when the strike cut's happening and no big for when you think a huck is going to occur. But the same idea is the fact that you just want to jump in front for one or two seconds, take away that option, and then get back around and hold your force. So next up we have straight up or flat. So I know that when we do Santa Cruz, I'll say flat, um, and that basically means that you are parallel if a normal force forcing to the sideline is perpendicular to the person with the disc, if you can imagine them standing there and looking upfield, then flat or straight up, those two are pretty interchangeable, um, you are parallel with that person. And this is the cut that we normally do in Santa Cruz, where you take a few steps to the break side uh, or the dump space, and then you come straight across the field and, and find that pass there. So that's kind of why we would use something like that. Um, but normally we w wouldn't really use that in the middle of the field, especially for more than one or two counts. Like it's the same thing as no big or strike, but we only want to do that for one or two stall counts. Um, mainly we'll go straight up or flat when the player with the disc is close to the sideline like I'm showing you guys here. So obviously if the force is away, you don't want to set up your mark out of bounds and giving them the whole field to work with, right? Because when you set yourself up out of bounds, they can literally throw to the whole field. You're not taking anything away because anything to your back is out of bounds. So what you want to do is you want to adjust your mark slightly and just come and be flat or straight up to them. Um, why you would do that is because you still want to take away things, right? So when they're all the way on the break side, and right now the force is away, so the break side is the home side, um, they're it's inevitable that they're going to have a lot of space to work with, but we want to try and take away as much as we can and work together with our defenders downfield. So although they're not taking away too much as a straight up mark there, just anything behind them, um, you know, they're taking away. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be set up out of bounds again, like I said before. So next we're going to be talking about trap, and, and trap is 
is basically the opposite of flat. So when the force is away, then you're on the home sideline or the brake sideline, then you want to be flat. Trap or sideline, forcing sideline, that just means you're forcing to the closest sideline, right? So when the disc is picked up on the side of the field, close to the sideline, then you want to basically limit the amount of space that they have to work with. So if the force is away, you want to set up forcing sideline or trap is another way of saying it. This is like the opposite of them being all the way on the break side um, because they have the least amount of space to work with. This is one of the most difficult areas to work with as far as working uh, on offense because of the space that they have is just so limited um, and it makes it really, really easy for the defense to cut off any throws. So the trap is basically trapping to the sideline and that blue mark right there is basically indicating the lane that they have to throw which is so narrow compared to the full size of the field. So a lot of the times you'll hear us say trap for one and that basically means is let's say that we want the force to be home but it's so difficult when they're on the away sideline that um, we want them to have to work for that first throw. So if the disc was turned over out of bounds on the away sideline um, we might go trap for one meaning for the first throw we're going to trap to the sideline and then we're going to go back to our original force which was home. hope that makes sense for you guys. So when trap for one happens you're forcing towards the sideline for just one throw and then after that you're going back to the initial force that you guys had set. So the four circles there on offense I'm just indicating for our next term which is force middle. And forcing middle is a concept that um, is exactly what it sounds like. You're forcing to the middle of the field. So if you can imagine each of those four circles is any place on the field that the handler might have it, have the disc and then the mark is um, forcing the, towards the middle of the field. So if they're on the home sideline then you're forcing towards the away. If they're on the away sideline then you're forcing to the home sideline. So the force changes and that's why it's critically important that you communicate what your force is if we ever are running force middle and you are also have the communication from the sideline to help you out and everyone screaming to make sure you're on the same page. If the disc is in the middle of the field then it's just up to you to decide which side you want to force. Sometimes it's very arbitrary because it doesn't necessarily matter whether you're forcing away or home if the disc is in the center of the field but um, if it's ever on one of the sidelines then you want to make sure that you're going flat to force towards the middle of the field. You don't want to force a sideline unless obviously you communicate that and say trap for one. So the black arrows are indicating where you're trying to force the disc to go. And why we do this is a lot of the times if we're getting beat deep, if a team is very tall or they have a really good thrower or something like that, you're going to use force middle because this will keep them from being able to have that big loopy outside in huck option that you know they can throw into so much space and it's usually uncontested if you're forcing um, like a normal force. So the two circles there are just again the two options with the people who could have the disc and we want them to throw so again we want to take away that this is normal when you're trying to take away the deep option from a team and so we want them to try and throw like directly over the vert stack so someone can maybe jump and get a hand on it or it's just basically like uncomfortable you're taking away the amount of space that the runner can go and get the disc. It increases the margin of error that someone could have um, as far as the throw goes. So if the force is just normally away then they have that option to throw a big loopy around um, huck to that person but if you switch the force to middle you know it makes it a little bit less comfortable of a throw for them. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for doing your homework.